All right. <clears throat> so hopefully everything should be going well and we're not dropping too many packets. I'm actually on wireless right now and we're waiting to update, so I might have to restart Firefox, but the stream should be good. Um, yeah. So sorry if the stream is a bit choppy tonight. Um, so right now I have just moved into a new place and the new place is really nice and everything, but it doesn't have ethernet run everywhere. So that kind of sucks a lot. Um, we'll get that remedied here in the next little bit. So first things first, I'm going to discuss how shift RMM has actually helped me at my J job, which I think is really cool. Um, I might have to lower the bit rate as well. But we'll see. We'll see how that goes. And we'll pause myself to make sure everything's going smoothly. Uh, 10, 0, 0, dot 8. Oop, there we go. Might be hogging all the bandwidth. Right now, um, I'm running off of a dinky little Wi Fi dongle. So that's not the best. But oh well. Oh, yeah, there's also a kitty. It's also a really cute kitty on my lap right now. It's one nice thing when I moved in with the lady friend is that I got a cat when I moved in. Here, let me pin down a bit. This is Juge. Juge is a good kitty. She thinks she can sit on my lap and I'll just sit there and pet her. She's right. Yeah, anyway. So let's get signed into the dashboard. Um, obviously I can't show you this with um, work data because that's work and reveals client information and that's not good security practice, but <clears throat> the web board has actually helped out a ton. So we have one client that is very particular about when their website up is down, they want very specific down to the minute information about uh, hey, our website was down for this long. What it helped was, you can see the failed HTTP check right there. Um, we should be able to zoom this out a bit. Should get some failed checks. Oh, anyway, um, we do get some failed checks here and we are able to go down here, go down, go to here and be like, oh, so we had this failed check here. Other checks around it passed. It was down for a minute. And we were just able to grab that information just like that the second we had it or the second we knew. So that was very useful information and actually helps me out in the wild. We also had a developer that was seeing if it was our website being down that was affecting a third party API call. And that's why, because it would get triggered by uh, an external function calling it. So that external function would call the website and then it would initiate a third party vendor API call. And we've been having a bunch of weird issues where it just randomly decides to not work. So. Yeah, it was really nice. Within like one day of deploying it, we already had two really good use cases and that was just for web monitoring. That wasn't even like for the server part of anything. I thought that was super cool. Um, anyway, so I haven't had a ton of time to work on this, but um, I did submit Shift RMM for the monthly time series meetup. I'd really like to present and show like, hey, InfluxDB is already easy to deploy and set up and make your own dashboards, but here's a bunch of pre can stuff so you don't have to do the work. Because sysadmins are lazy. We're a lazy bunch. So anything to reduce the amount of work we have to do, the better. So back to the Defender alerts. Um, it's probably gonna be easier to do this in Explorer. So I'll go to Win Event Log, Microsoft Windows. Don't care about the computer, we care about Oh yeah, we don't have any spicy malware. Let's get some spicy malware going. Um, let me look at a proxmox really quick. So just like on the stream last time, we're gonna be running some malware and getting notified of it from Windows Defender and Shift RMM. And hopefully what we can do is get an alert that actually has relevant info about that vulnerability. So Zeke shut off right now. We get Zeke turned on here. Get our Windows VM that just has bad things happen to it all the time. 
And mind you, if you are going to do stuff like this, um, make sure you have a virtual machine. Make sure it's on a VLAN that's uh, set up for guest mode. So just uh, while this is spinning up, um, I'm just going to go through how it's set up. S Zeke is our Windows VM where we do bad things to Windows virtual machines. So we go over to hardware. So we see it's on its own VLAN. And that way it's much harder to hop the network and that VLAN isn't allowed to talk to any of the production stuff on my network. So that limits the risk is if this box is compromised and it tries to uh, it tries to reach out to other things on my network, it can only see itself in the internet. So that would limit that risk that way. It's also snapshotted. So let's go to our snapshots here. You are here, stream malware, let's roll it back. Let's go back to a simpler time, a more innocent time. So that's been rolled back, and I think we do have to reboot the VM. Maybe? And eh, perhaps. Yeah. Um, that did crash the VM. Should be fine, though. There we go. So now it's going to boot up from that snapshot. And this is the clean slate. So the two big mitigations here, it's set up on its own VLAN that can only reach out to the internet and it can't reach to any of my other networks. The other one being is it's snapshotted. So, ye. All right. Next thing I'm going to do is remote into this virtual machine and see if we have to do any updates. Um, unlock the key ring. Quick connect. Let me go. Let me in. Man. Network is going to be slow for a little bit. Should get it fixed sooner rather than later, though. All right, it's going to be Bucky that had a shutdown. Not a huge deal. All right, let me grab all the fancy malware so we can generate some data really quick. Uh, malware, copy. Mind you, this is all dated and I'm running this just, you know, for help for myself. Disabled. Oh, poo, I did think I made some changes. Let me pull up Codium quick. Let's make sure there's not any updates. Yeah, there's, it's Windows, there's always updates. So let's get that installed. Data severity IDs. Itch. Um, let's also get tele, the telegraph can pick, uh, telegraph can fig pulled up. All that updates installing. So after we get everything prepped here, we'll take another snapshot. Um, program files. It installs in Telegraph. Pull up our Telegraph comp, or yeah, just put it in the standard config. Because every machine has Defender on it, so. Just pop this open. Pop this open. Okay. So I believe these don't really show. Message matters, opcode text doesn't matter, time created and process name. I think process name just shows other stuff, but. Um, process name just shows that it was Defender that picked it up. It wasn't what I thought it was. It shows the process for that Windows event. It doesn't show the process from Defender. So this is a Windows event thing, not a process thing. So I can get rid of that as well. But that is where we're going to put our integer field. So let's go back while well, that update's installing. Perfect. So we have updates installed. We have our config change. Uh, OK. 
So let's go to settings. I believe it's settings. Yep, Firefox needs to restart. Perfect. No biggie though. We'll just pull up and start our session over. So Firefox. I will say one of the best parts about moving in with my significant other has been getting to enjoy her animals all the time and not just when I'm at her house. She's working on cleaning out the garage from the move right now and I'm sitting here just petting a kitty. It's really nice. Though it can be kind of awkward to just like have her chin rest on my wrist while I type. Totally worth it though. Totally worth it. All right, let's get YouTube pulled back up. I think it wipes your session whenever you log out, but oh well. Boards. Let's go to data. All right, let's go to data. Oops, sources, event log. So I believe it was a misconfiguration is why we couldn't get the info. Where we ended up last stream is I could get an alert to trigger pager duty or get an alert to trigger, but when I try to put in useful information, it wouldn't work. And the reason for that is the concept of tags. So when you run a query in InfluxDB, There are certain fields that just kind of come along for free, no matter what. So let's grab, zoom in a bit. Let's grab the Windows event log. The channel doesn't matter. So anything in this drop down here is what's known as a tag. So these are much easier to query by. 11, 16, submit, um, last, submit, no results in the last hour. Perfect. And let's grab fields. So fields are any data that isn't um, processed and raises cardinality. So each one of these is a unique time series. So there's a time series for Windows event logs, for 1151, 1150, 2000, and per each one of these tags. So there's a host event ID series for event ID 1150 and KCPC. And those will show up no matter what. So we'll do a table, we'll go here. So even though we only asked for message, you notice how we get channel, the host name, the event ID, keywords, and that sort of information. Those are all tags. So when we do the query for, hey, show me anything with alert ID 11, 16, and 17, I believe, that's why it doesn't show up is that we're only asking for the integer field. We're not asking for the actual relevant information we want. So the solution for that is we can either make that a tag, which eh, raises cardinality, which can eventually lower performance because the more things that it has to deal with, the worse it will perform. That won't be a problem uh, eventually with Influx IOX, which is the new backend written in Rust and arranges the data differently. So cardinality is no longer an issue. So it's going to be much better for storing like traces and logs from data whereas right now influx is really optimized for storing metrics so like what's the temperature of this iot device at a certain time how hard is the cpu working it's not good at arranging like log data um, it can do an okay job and flux ql is good at querying it it's just the storage um, so by querying, I mean like there's a good language to grab that data. It's just not performant to store and grab it. So we can grab the process name, but that's a string. So we need an integer here for the alerting engine to work. So the event ID, something like that. Um, level, I believe it was level, process ID, thread ID. So these are all the system fields that you can grab. 
And right now, if we scoot this over here, we are grabbing the event fields, message, username, time created, that kind of stuff. None of those were integers. So we need to grab some of these integers in order to help us. So let's do that really quick. Um, come on, come on. Where's Firefox? All right. Could probably grab a level. We'll grab a few of them. So let's grab level. Let's grab task. That's weird. PID's probably actually PID's probably a relevant one. And let's grab thread ID. So let's grab process ID because that'll be an integer and actually something we might care about if we're looking for something like running on a system. And let's also grab thread ID, don't probably care, channel, actually a process name we do want. Process name. Or no, process name is just going to be Defender. That's right. We are going to grab Thread ID. Thread ID. I'm going to save that guy out. Oh. We're going to save this guy out. Once that's saved out, ah, forgot I'm already peed. We're going to pop open services. Run that as an admin so we can restart Telegraph. Let's restart Telegraph. All right, so Telegraph should be running. We'll let it think for a little bit just in case it's having a config issue and then it crashes. <clears throat> Then we start running spicy malware. Um, actually, let's take a snapshot first. Uh, that probably be a safe and responsible thing to do. So let's log into our hypervisor. Take a VM snapshot. That way we don't have to rerun that Windows update. So let's take a snapshot, take snapshot, stream three, four, three, four, two, one. Don't care about RAM, take my snapshot. Like how Proxmox will actually like show you the dependency chain. I think that's really cool. And the nice thing is, is that's an incremental. Um, so Proxmox is aware of the storage that it runs on and it's able to take those snapshots based on this, using a, uh, like a file system snapshot if you're using ZFS or Ceph, which I think is really cool. I shouldn't say file system, that it'll use the storage system for a snapshot. So now that we have that all set up and we're ready to do bad things, let's just double check Telegraph still running. Awesome. Now let's start running malware. And mind you, this is default Defender. If you are using Defender in production, um, make sure you're tuning it with group policy or something like that. There we go, found a threat. Um, 
what were some of the ones that were really good to run? Was it Darby? Camilla was a good one. So let's run Camilla. Defender's not happy about that. And what was the other one? I think Firefox was mad about the other one. Yep, there we go. It's finding more threats. I think Darby was it. Darby was the one we were trying to download. Perfect. Okay, so. This should... Now we should be able to refresh this data. Windows, and we should get some different event IDs now. Don't necessarily care about the channel. We do care about event IDs. Yeah, the spicy ones. I think these are the spicy ones. Fields. Data thread ID. So data thread ID shows up as a string. Okay, so now we need to find out error code. Nope, we need to find an integer is what we're looking for now. So one of these fields should be an integer. Um, let's refresh my memory, process name. That was just important for other reasons. I think we did process ID, which should be an integer. So let's go data should be process, what? What? Where's process name? Boo. Let's go to the alert and see what we were using last time. It's been a week, like I said, and I haven't touched it a ton. Uh, Microsoft Defender. Let's look at the query. Event ID, 1116. Version was the field we were able to snag an integer out of. So we're not grabbing that. Excuse me. So it's just grabbing version straight up. So crap. All I got to say is crap. And I think it has to be a field you can't use a tag. Yep, so let's grab version. Let's see what we get out of that. Could also probably use event ID and then just be like, hey, if it's in this range, it's probably something sketchy we should be worried about, but Let's try version. Let's go back into Quick Connect. Go back. SPC, C, Program Files. Uh, where are you? Telegraph. Don't rename. Please don't rename. That's the error log. We don't necessarily care about that. Um, let's go with notepad. Let's add a version to the mix. Let's 
All right, so version was a field, so that should work. Now we have to restart the telegraph service to get the new config going. Now we wait, we wait and look at the kitty, and then we run more malware. Isn't that right? <laughs> run malware, evil kitty. <laughs> kitty go purr. Okay, so if that was gonna poo itself, it probably would have by now. Is that refresh or restart? Okay, so Telegraph's still running. Let's take some of that downloaded malware. Make some noise in the logs. I wonder what's in this data folder. Hmm. All right, anyway. Let's go back into our InfluxDB dashboard. Go back to the data explorer and let's refresh it and see what we get. It's nice that data shows up really frequently, or it, it refreshes pretty quickly. Windows event log, snag these event IDs. Let's look at the field, see if we can get version. There we go. All right. So now let's look at this in a table and hopefully this will make sense. So when we alert, this is essentially the query we're running, except now we get the table visualization, thankfully, instead of the graph one. So this is the information of what we see. So this is what we can shove into an alert. So this isn't very useful, right? We would much rather put Oh, where's the message? Excuse me. We want to put like the threat name. Because that'd be cool. So now we need to go back in here and see if we can tag certain things ourselves or if there's certain things that we can do to deal with this. Um, you can send any field system, blah, 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 with event tags. You can also do globbing by default. Other fields are sent, but you can limit by using event fields configure or with globbing. Okay, computed fields level opcode are converted. So it doesn't look like we're allowed to create our own tags. So what we might have to do is create our own tag, or we might have to use one of the processors to convert something into a tag. So now we're gonna go to the Telegraph documentation. Line 17 documentation. And guides, introductions, telegraph plugins. So I believe we want a processor. Converter is used to change the type of tag field or array values in addition to changing. This one just might be useful for later. Date, dedupe, defaults, enumerate, exact D, file path, network interface, override. Pivot's a cool thing. Pivot will take what would be multiple series and then use a shared value. So like the time it was submitted, 
and then turn each of those series into columns in one series, which is nice. Strings, tag limit, template, top K, unpivot. That one's interesting. I get interesting in the fact that I can't think what you would want to do. Um, the table key determines the target. Type the array. Tag field into a string. Okay. So I don't think you would be allowed to turn something else into a tag, which kind of sucks. So that's not what we want. We don't want unpivot. We don't want top tag limit. Don't want strings. Excuse me. Would rename be it? Ah, oh, dude, that's cool. I haven't seen a lot of these plugins before. Um, so this would probably let you be like, hey, this means SSH. I want to I want to say that's what that means. So it would take port 80 and then add port 80 service HTTP. This will be a surprise tool that'll help us later for like some of the PFSense stuff. I think that could be useful is enriching like some of the firewall blocks once that data starts getting in there. Be like, hey, this is HTTP. So that way, if you're, you know, like a junior network engineer or something like that. Um, yeah, cool discovery. That's kind of part of the fun part about this is that it lets you discover more of what InfluxDB and Telegraph have to offer. You just kind of find fun stuff. I wonder if that would be... Oh, crap. We're experiencing, We're experiencing buffer issues. OBS. What are you doing? Okay, looks like OBS is figuring its life out. I'll scroll very slowly. File path. The heck is that? Enumerate. Defaults. No. Dedupe date clone converter. The converter process is used. Hmm. Let me go look. I wonder. Merge override data format influx. Oh, so this will parse data. So that's not what we want. We want inputs, control F, defender. Or event. Windows event logs. So let's just search for tag. So I wonder if I tag, exclude empty. Um, it's gonna tag. See if there's anything that would like give me any hints as to what I can do with the tags. You can send any field system as tag fields and the event tags configure it. Okay, cool, 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 cool. So we can use event tags.
fields to include as tags. So we want this, we want this, we want this. And now what we want to do is event underscore tags. So now what we can do is we could specify things to be tagged. So this is going to lower cardinality. However, I'm not super worried about it because it's going to be a low data count. So there we go. Um, I'm going to copy this off really quick and do a, just a template file. Just in case I like restore the snapshot, I don't forget anything. Let's pull that up, go back in here, go back in here. So now we have to figure out what field we want to tag. It looks like it's going to be threat name is going to be the uh, thing we want to grab as a tag. So let's make sure, A, that we're still grabbing that information. Um, threat, data threat name, hooray. Can't aggregate strings, we can grab last. Yay, so this should be grabbing everything from tonight, which is good. Uh, sorry about the buffering, guys. I'm sorry about buffering. Oh no. Should definitely not be doing this over Wi-Fi, or I'll have to drop the bitrate, or get a better dongle. One of the two. I might have a project for this weekend now. <laughs> Landlords are cool with it. We already asked them if we can do it. So yay. Okay. So we have this value, we want it to be threat name. So that should, if we just put in threat name, it should start grabbing it as a tag. And then that means we can put it in the pager duty alert. And I'm not that worried. And when I do a a pager duty alert, I think it'd be nice to get the whole threat name. So if we drop to the script editor here, and let's just do a keep, just to give you guys a better sense of what's going on here, because it's very hard to see with the, uh, uh, let's keep time, pull up chat, so let's do time, value, and let's do event id. There's some other stuff that's tagged here that's probably just like stupid. So now you can see we get this is what would be indexed. So each instance of so each instance of this would create another series, but I'm not super worried because usually there's not a ton of malware going on. And if you do have a ton of malware happening on your network, the least of your problems is your monitoring system queries being a little slow that day. So we'll try that strategy. So there we go in here. We want threat we want threat name. Next thing we want is we want to restart telegraph. Yeah. Sorry about the bad stream quality. Um, sorry about the bad stream quality tonight. I'm in a new house. I still have the residential uh, ONT for my fiber connection, and I'm on a crappy Wi-Fi dongle I got for free. So a little cruddy tonight. Still getting settled in from the move, but 
We shall soldier on. Okay. So that should be working now. Now we should, should, in theory. Hasn't crapped out yet. Now let's create some noise. Bring the noise, as the kids would say. Surprised those zip files are still there. With the janky malware on it. There we go. Downloads. Let's put Camilla down there. Yeah, it's not happy about this. Let's run Gedzik. Okay. So Defenders is ca Defender is catching all of those events. Now, when we go to the data, what we should see through a hard refresh. Let's close down some tabs too. Yeah, that poor thing is sweet though. I am very excited to play with that. I might have to spin up a PF Sense box just because I already have ways of logging that. So let's go to Windows. Let's go to Event Log. Now what we should see. And yeah, oh, that's not good. That's no good. That is definitely no good. We're not seeing the threat name here, which is bad. So let's see if there's any anything in the logs. I might have forgotten to restart Telegraph too. So let's restart it. Run. Just try running Camilla. Let's try cutting Camilla from the zip. Let's try running Darby. And now let's try to pull up the log to see if oh, so that has been updated. Three five three five three five. Is it writing to the top first? Now it's descending order. Okay. So there's a whole bunch of errors. Okay, so not yeah. Not right now. Doesn't look like there's anything weird going on. So maybe this tags a load. This isn't the case. I do have to uh, leave here pretty soon. But it was definitely nice streaming. Feels nice to stream in the new office. Definitely like my new office a lot better. At least he's a kitty in it. But I have to go watch sappy movies after this. And I'm okay with that. Uh, Windows event log, events, that one, that one. Oh, crap. All right. I think what might be happening is that it hasn't had time to, like, rebuild the indexes or something weird like that. I don't know. Um, I'll check back on this later tonight and let everybody know next week how it goes. It was really fun hanging out with everybody. Feels good to be streaming again, and that should be it. It was nice streaming again. 